Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today I've got some World of Warships gameplay for you with the Jean Bart, the French Tier 9 battleship. This is actually a premium battleship that you can buy with coal in the armory, and it's probably one of my best coal investments of the game so far. I'd say it's my second favorite ship in the game, and coming from somebody who doesn't really enjoy battleship gameplay all that much, the Jean Bart just completely breaks the mold of the battleship. Many battleships are very slow, sluggish, perform best when played at extreme ranges, and aren't really set up to make the big plays, push in on the objectives, be the tip of the spear, lead the charge. But the Jean Bart often finds itself in that position. Now, you don't necessarily want to be the first person in. The Jean Bart doesn't have a big health pool. It also doesn't have great armor. Its main benefit are the two cannons on the front of the ship, allowing the Jean Bart to essentially put all of its big cannons on target while bow tanking against an enemy. If you can find a nice island to nudge up against, reducing the engagement angles of your enemies and basically forcing yourself into a position where anyone who wants to shoot you is going to have to shoot you from on front, then you're in a great spot. It's got pretty big weaknesses against HE spam though, so if your enemy knows how to fight you, it can be a bad situation. Now here, I'm actually pushing into the middle of the map, which generally speaking as a battleship is just about the worst thing you can do. You're a big, fat, slow moving target. Everybody out there wants to, to rack up some good damage this round, and if you they see a fat battleship mid map, it's like the go-to target. Now, initially I was thinking about pushing up to this island direct north of me, but I noticed that my fleet's strength is generally on the right side. And even with the Jean Bart, a ship that uh, has a bit more independence than most battleships out there, you're still not gonna win the game playing full solo against an enemy team. You gotta work with your fleet's strengths. So I noticed that uh, that my team is generally going to be stronger on the right side of the map. So although I don't necessarily feel like I need to be right in the middle of my team to be most effective, I do want to be in a position where uh, I can work together and we can focus fire. I mean, that's a big part of any fleet strategy. The more you can focus fire down the enemy ships, the faster you can kill them, reducing the damage that they can put back on you. It's pretty basic strategy, very basic RTS stuff but it still rules the fundamentals of World of Warships combat, especially with the bigger ships that are gonna be pounding on each other with their primary cannons for a while. The more you can focus fire, the better you're gonna do in the long run. So I'm cutting over to the right side because it looks like that's where the best positioning is gonna be. I'm moving over to this island in front of me. I figure I'm probably gonna cut right on this island once I get there, but I do leave myself the option to cut left if somebody provides a good target on the center point there or decide that I wanna um, maybe mix it up a little bit last second. I always like to give myself an option, but my main plan is to cut right here and maybe hug this island and push in. Now, my biggest threat on the right so far is that Alaska hugging that island. You noticed I kind of uh, pelted his nose that peeked around the corner there. He knows what he's doing. He's hugging that island and he's gonna peek out if anybody presents a decent enough target. It's a risky play and most of our fleet strength is over here, so I don't imagine him getting a lot of good shots off, but he is probably my biggest threat if I decide that I wanna push up further. Now I'm checking the ship types again. Luckily we only have a tier eight carrier in this game and the Jean Bart has excellent anti-air, so I'm not too worried about carrier play this match. The Alaska is peeking out again from behind the island, giving me a nice broadside. He's a little bit angled against me, but he's still showing enough of that side of his ship that I'm going to probably hit him with a bunch of shots here. There we go. Uh, a little over 7,000 damage. Not insane. No Citadel hits there, but uh, he can't really keep doing that and taking that kind of damage there. The teams are a little weird because we only have one destroyer per team. So generally speaking, less scouting. And for whatever reason, our Missouri has taken it upon himself to go capture B because the Missouri, <laughs> a big slow moving battleship in the very center of the map that I just talked about is a great idea for aggressive gameplay. So he's right there in the center and he's about to take an absolute pounding from the enemy team. They're quite literally closing in around him. Now, the Cleveland is also taking a pretty good pounding from the Missouri, but a Missouri trading for a Cleveland is not, in my opinion, a great trade. 
And at this point in the game, I'm starting to think that their team has much better fleet positioning than us. They have lots of power on the left side of the map, which is going to give them plenty of broadside opportunities on unsuspecting ships on the right side of the map. My team is doing the best it can to hide behind islands, though, and for the most part, they seem like they're doing a decent job, aside from the Missouri, of course. Luckily, our Missouri does at least finish off that Cleveland. I tried to hit him with a little bit of a volley there, and their Missouri is giving us a bit of an angle there. Not a full broadside, probably preventing some citadels from me right there, but we did 6k. Actually, I'm not particularly happy with that volley there. Probably should have aimed a bit more for the upper belt, but I thought he might even out a bit. He's trying to get behind this island and provide a little bit of that broadside cover and maybe focus on some other ships. So we've got a weird map layout. We're about to use lose mid control. The left side is gonna close in on us. And the enemy Missouri, although out of position, is basically going to bait the team, my team, into pushing up further. So things are gonna get real dicey in the next couple of minutes in terms of who has more ships and what the layout of this map looks like it could be anybody's game at this point it's still very early in the match we're down two ships now we lost a cruiser and a battleship and they've only lost a cruiser and as much as the aggressive player in me just wants to push in right now and attack that missouri i know that i will be giving huge broadsides and exposing myself to all kinds of angles of attack if i push up right now but believe me the thought is occurring to me and i'm just hoping for him to peek some little bit of his ship out from behind that island. But that's kind of the point in being an aggressive player like that. You can sometimes bait out the less patient players to make stupid plays, and then all of a sudden they get deleted. So while I wait, which is one of the hardest things for me to do in this game, there's Nagato prevent presenting a full broadside in the distance. I take a shot at him. The Nagato, for the most part, is playing the way he should be playing, staying extremely far away, using his highly accurate guns to essentially be a sniper battleship. Pretty boring gameplay, if you ask me. I've got the Nagato right now, and I'm just like, oh, God. Do I really want to progress this ship that much further? But that is the play style. He's doing what he's supposed to be doing over there. Both the Alaska and the Missouri are pretty hurt over here. It looks like a cruiser might be presenting himself to the rest of my team over there, but I don't really have an angle on it. The Missouri's radaring me right now, which isn't really a big deal. Um, not too many ships have good angles on me, so I'm okay with pushing up a little, but I'm ever aware of my left side and the firepower on the left side of that map that can absolutely hammer me if I come around the corner of this island. So that's the thing that I want to avoid. Now, everybody on my team spots this New Orleans trying to run away. Cruisers are just such fun targets for battleships, especially ones presenting full broadside. I do a tiny, tiny bit of damage to him there, but I'm not the only one shooting at him and we're losing a cruiser center map. We just lost a cruiser center map and they lose a cruiser back map there. We're still down one ship uh, more than their ships and things are closing in. In fact, I'm noticing the two lower left ships on my map are, <laughs> uh, one of them is the carrier. He hasn't retreated far enough and now he's gonna be in a firing angle for these aggressive ships here. So he thought he was safe parking behind that island. No longer is the case. The Iowa looks like he's going to try and defend him here, and there's not really a whole lot I can do about that situation. The Jean Bart mid-map is turning to actually push our position. I realize I've got to basically make a move. The Missouri finally gets taken out here. I was pushing towards him to see if I could either finish him off or engage the two ships behind this island. The Jean Bart, however, is going to come around this corner in just a second. I'm thinking, can I get my cannons on an angle to hit him there. I don't think so, and even so, he's pretty angled against me. I'm not sure how much damage I'll be able to do here, but I'm turning the cannons right now. Jean Bart can definitely bounce a lot of shots. Bow tanking AP isn't that effective against him, but I take the shot regardless. Secondaries are probably doing a little bit more damage than my primaries did there, um, but we make it around the corner. We've got this island now protecting us from that mid flank. And we're in a position to decide what do we do next. There's battleships running away in the distance. The Jean Bart is presenting a full broadside to my team. And he just got punished hard for it. So I'm going to come around this island. And I'm going to put up a fight against the left side 
closing in on us. The Jean Bart is still technically alive, and if he's alive by the time I corner here, well, I'm gonna put him down and engage the rest of his fleet. Now, something that I still struggle with in World of Warships quite a bit is judging the angle of an enemy ship. I should be looking at the minimap a bit more to understand the angle that enemy ships are presenting me, but here I'm like, oh, he's giving me a full broadside. Let's aim for the waterline there, but a lot of that would have ricocheted there. Only a few got penetrations. So it was a little bit of a risky shot, but he had very low health. Luckily, it didn't matter. And I do kind of snag a kill that perhaps wasn't mine to snag, but this is World of Warships. You got to put down enemy ships as fast as possible. Now, about 10 minutes into this match, things are actually starting to kick off. That's how things go sometimes in World of Warships. Everybody's biding their time. A few people push in early, get taken out early, and then when the fleets start moving late game, that's when things just start popping off. Now we've got this tier nine Brindisi uh, uh, Italian cruiser in the distance here. I've become a bit more familiar with the Italian cruisers. They are one of the newer ship lines in the game. I'm trying to dodge, judge his speed here, and uh, he's so low health, I'm hoping that this volley will take him out. He takes another hit right before this gets there. My volley's not looking great, but a single shot there was enough to actually put him down. So Brindisi down, <laughs> I'm at 33k damage and two kills, which I'm feeling sort of like, okay, at this point in the game, I was hoping to have about 100k damage. That'd be nice. But again, a little bit of a slower moving match, and sometimes you start to shine in the second half. Now, we got this Nagato right here, which should not be fighting me in close quarters, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And I'm waiting to see if he pops around the corner of this island, because if he did that, it would be GG, no re. I would easily win that fight, but it looks like he might not be turning around this corner. Or if he does, it looks like he might be going for a bow tank and he might go for the ram or something crazy like that. Nagato is a tier seven battleship uh, trading for a tier nine Jean Bart. Probably be a pretty good trade for them, especially at this point in the game. So I'm like, you know what? Screw him. I've got an Iowa on my right flank that just missed citadeling the crap out of me. Luckily, I can't risk another broadside like that. So rather than going for the extremely risky play, I'm gonna turn and bow in towards the Iowa there. And we're gonna go fight this Iowa and potentially carrier if there's a carrier out there to be had. That makes more sense to me if the Nagato comes around this island. Well, I got a whole fleet right behind me that is happy to turn him into Swiss cheese. So as much as it pained me to back out from that head-on fight, because I love doing head-on fights in the Jean Bart, I was thinking, you know what? This is a very close round. If I do that, it could be the mistake uh, that I don't want to make here. So Iowa, full broadside. I'm going to launch one into him. We get two citadels right away for some massive damage. There we go. Finally putting the damage numbers on the map. The Iowa looks like he's turning, but not that fast. I've propped my reload booster because I'm like, we got to capitalize on this. Another citadel against the Iowa. Now he's kind of turning, but his angle still, he turns back in a little. I'm really confused by how much broadside he's given me here. And uh, we take out one of his turrets, which is nice. I still got to be careful against the Iowa. I'm just checking to see if anybody's behind me here. I do have a cruiser on my left side that looks like he's going to be trying to help out the Iowa and uh, hitting me with his HE rounds, which is actually really bad. Um, so I got to kill this Iowa as fast as I can. I can't be baited for too long while a cruiser pounds me from the distance. And right there, only getting a 2,000 damage volley against him. That's exactly what I don't want to be doing. I can't just be sitting out here trading low damage volleys against low damage volleys. Iowa hits me with an HE volley there that does basically nothing. We bounced all the shots, but he's still giving me a nice thing. I'm aiming for upper armor there. Uh, and we do a nice 11,000 volley. So unless he's given me a full broadside, uh, I can't aim waterline on the Iowa right now. So we're, uh, we're gonna continue focusing and he just keeps turning in a little bit more. So now I decide to go for waterline. Not the best aimed volley there, but we still get a Citadel hit for 17K damage. The Iowa looks like he's one volley away from death, but you got to be aware of Iowa's healing abilities. I mean, uh, the American battleships, they can tank some damage. And once they start 
turning in, bow in, that's where your damage potential starts to drop. And that right there is just an example of, again, I should have been aiming at a superstructure. I might have been able to finish him off there. Uh, another poorly aimed shot on my part, unfortunately. If you hit the turrets of an enemy battleship, you can have the sometimes the odds of taking them out, but uh, often they'll just bounce all of your shots, reducing your damage. And there, again, another 2,000 volley. Now I'm getting nervous. I'm like, okay, we're a bit close here. My secondaries are starting to light them up and whatnot, but I'm also on fire. We're really close. That last volley did 8K. Now it's really, really close. I see he's going for the ram, and I'm like, oh, God, did I just screw this up? But I think I'm going to get the reload in time, put it into a superstructure, and whew, save myself a really embarrassing death right there. But we're getting smacked by the rune. And the Azumo, which I thought was actually going to be dead because he was giving broadside to my fleet just a second ago. He's managed to get behind the island. I've got torpedo bombers coming up my tail. I've got to turn to the right to try and angle against the torpedo bombers. I'm really worried about the Azumo's next volley doing some serious damage, some potential citadel damage. So I'm not fully angled into it. He did 4,000. Not a disaster. Okay, I can get my next volley off against the Azumo. And then worry about this torpedo bomber and the rune. I think I'm probably okay on the torp bomber here. The two torps are looking okay, but luckily the uh, Jean Bart has good enough agility to dodge these torps. And now I gotta think about engaging the rune. My turrets are already turned all the way around this to the right. So instead of turning to the left here, I'm gonna go ahead and continue turning to the right. It'll take a little longer to get my ship around, but I think it's faster than turning the turrets. And the rune is just having a field day with me. He's lighting me on fire. He's pissing me off. I'm like, basically, he is my weakness. HE spam is exactly what the Jean Bart doesn't want. And so I'm just like, oh God, he's got a lot of health left. And if I'm going to finish him off before he kills me, uh, it's going to take a lot of really high damaging volleys, which granted he's a cruiser and the Jean Bart can do that, especially if he's giving me a broadside. Right there, we managed to do 8K plus, which is certainly a good volley, but he's still got enough health left. I'm fighting off these bombers that are going to try and finish me off here. Luckily, I have extremely good anti-air, and the carrier, I believe, misses me with these next bombs. I've got my adrenaline rush giving me the fastest reload possible. I'm going to go ahead and pop my reload booster here as well to try and get the next shot off against him. I'm like down to nothing here. If he catches me on fire, it's guaranteed dead. And there we go, I'm on fire. The volley's in the air. This one has to kill him. I'm not gonna get another shot off. And it does, right before I burn to death and explode. We get the Kraken, five kills in the game. And sure, it wasn't the most high damaging game I've ever had with the Jean Bard, and not all those kills were necessarily my kills to take. But you know what? Uh, karma eventually comes around. I've had 240k games with the Jean Bart in which I got like maybe one kill or something. So uh, we finally get the Kraken for it, which is nice. And uh, it was a pretty solid game. Things were looking very dicey up until about two thirds through the match in which my team started to pull ahead. And usually you start to see one team winning early game. This was a game in which both teams were kind of equal for quite a while. And so that can make things a little bit slower sometimes in the start when teams are trading equally and not over committing at the start, waiting for another team to make a big mistake. And ultimately my team was able to make some big plays mid-match and really turn the tides. Even that gameplay in that round was not my most impressive. A lot of my volleys were poorly aimed in my opinion but a lot of the decisions I made, I think in the long run were the smart decisions and helped me stay alive till toward end game in which I really started to capitalize on the remaining fleet. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this World of Warships edit. I've been enjoying the game a lot lately, been playing it a lot lately, trying to progress different ship lines and ship tiers, but I still do keep coming back to my old favorites. I'll catch you guys next time. This is Level Cap signing off.